And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Monday, September 17th. I am your host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories we read here can also be found at our website, IndianCountryNews.com, and here are some of those news stories for the day. Several thousand motorcycle riders turned out September 15th for the 19th annual Trail of Tears ride in North Alabama. The ride follows part of the trail that thousands of Native Americans followed when the federal government forced their removal to Oklahoma in 1830. Dwight Clark told WAAY-TV that he makes the ride each year to remember his great-grandmother who escaped from the Trail of Tears. He said he would hide, or she would hide, any time a stranger came to the house because she thought they might take her back to the reservation. Police in Madison estimated the motorcycle ride had 2,000 to 2,500 participants when it rolled through town. Another large group of riders took a different route and the two groups converged in Waterloo in northwest Alabama to finish the ride. Officials at the Theodore Roosevelt National Park are moving into the next phase of an elk management program using technology rather than guns. Superintendent uh, Valerie Naylor says the Western North Dakota Park has finished reducing what was a bloated elk herd through management hunts and now it will monitor and maintain the remaining population using radio collars. The National Park Service has contracted with an Idaho company to capture between 17 and 21 elk in the park's south unit and fit them with collars. Elk were hunted out of their range by the late 1800s. They were uh, reintroduced to the park in 1985 and grew to a herd of more than 1,200, which park officials determined was way too large for the park to sustain. The effort to reduce the herd began in 2010 after a couple of years of debate over the best method. A plan to use volunteer shooters came about after former U.S. Senator Byron Dorgan and state officials objected in in to initial park service plans to pay federal sharpshooters to kill the elk. The special permits and hunts in the fall of 2010 and 2011 drew thousands of applicants from around the country and reduced the herd by over 800 animals. And members of the Ojibwe Nation Lake Superior Band were celebrating the harvest of their first elk in decades since Wisconsin hunters eliminated the entire herd a century ago. Tribal hunters harvested one treaty elk under a permit provided by Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission last week. The hunt lasted about an hour when one shot was used to bring down the spike bull as it presented itself to two LCO hunters and a feast of thanksgiving on the shores of Lake Superior will finish the event off on September 17th. Suffice to say, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, which criticized the tribe's efforts last week throughout the state press while trumpeting public safety issues and described their alarmed status, is over. Meanwhile, a trophy wolf hunt in the same territory is due to begin in mid-October is being held up by numerous challenges due to the use of dogs and other issues, including discounting tribal input that legislators ignored before implementing a lottery system this year for giving out over 1,000 wolf hunting permits. An Arizona tribe with plans to build a casino and resort on property it purchased near Glendale scored a key victory last week when a federal appeals court ruled that the U.S. Department of Interior rightfully awarded reservation status to a section of the land. The Ninth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals issued a split decision rejecting arguments by the city of Glendale that the property is ineligible for such status because it falls within its corporate limits. The property is in an unincorporated island of Maricopa County and bordered on three sides by Glendale. Tohono O'Dum Nation Chairman Ned Norris Jr. characterized the lawsuit that challenged the U.S. Department of Interior's decision to award reservation status in 2010 as just another delaying tactic. The mayor of Niagara Falls says he may withhold fire and emergency services from the casino owned by the Seneca Nation of Indians after, if the tribe doesn't pay the millions of dollars it owes to the city. During comments made at a September 11th memorial ceremony last week, Mayor Paul Deister said he'd be prepared to direct the city's fire chief not to respond to emergency calls from the Seneca Niagara Casino and Hotel. The city is uh, owed $60 million, million from the Senecas who have refused to make gaming revenue payments to the state because of an ongoing dispute. Uh, Seneca President Robert O'Dowey supporter suggested that Deister was just trying to ramp up pressure and express doubt that he'd let employees, tourists, and others at risk at the casino property. 
Volunteers are planning to help fix up the former national capital of the Cherokee Nation, now a historic site in Georgia. The state park will be uh, open on September 29th for volunteer work projects. Uh, admission will be free for tours. The Cherokee legislature established Nui Chota in 1825. It was the site of the first Indian language newspaper office for American Indians throughout the North America. From their capital, Cherokee leaders resisted relinquishing their remaining lands to the state of Georgia. The legal battle reached the U.S. Supreme Court. The U.S. government eventually forced the Cherokee westward despite the Supreme Court decision upholding their right to stay there in what became known as the Trail of Tears. That deportation began in Nui Chota. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to say miigwech for joining with us and you come back again soon.